My name is Patrick Boyle. I'm a professor of medicine at the University of New Mexico in Albuquerque. I'm the lead physician for a group of about 6,000 patients with type 2 diabetes. We're going to talk today about the use of pramlantide in type 2 diabetes. This is a peptide that is actually a synthetic derivative of a naturally occurring hormone called amylin that is co-secreted with insulin from the beta cells. Patients with type 1 diabetes, they're absolutely amylin deficient. In the type 2 diabetes patient, they're relatively amylin deficient. And so in addition to replacing insulin in individuals with type 2 diabetes, it seems appropriate that we might want to replace amylin with a pramlantide compound. So pramlantide has a couple of tricks to make it work well in patients with type 2 diabetes and make it easily tolerable. One is that it inhibits appetite and there is a central nervous system effect and there's also an effect on the stomach that causes it to slow down gastric emptying. In doing that, patients can take their insulin, take their pramlantide, and then get maybe a third to a half of a way into their meal and all of a sudden have a sense of satiety that prevents them from eating the rest of the meal. So had they taken their entire preprandial dose of fast-acting insulin, they then would be caught an hour or so down the road with insufficient amount of nutrient coming in off of the gut to match the amount of insulin that they had taken. So one of the keys to using this drug safely in patients is to cut back the dose a little bit of the preprandial fast-acting insulin to reduce it by a third going into the meal. Now the package insert says to do it by about a third in many patients, that's probably more than enough, and you may think about using a little bit less than that. The patient with type 2 diabetes is a lot less likely to end up with a low blood sugar in the postprandial period, primarily because as their sugar drops, they have a natural built-in mechanism for preventing hypoglycemia in that they shut off their endogenous insulin secretion. Their beta cells are still existing. It's not like type 1 diabetes where they've been destroyed by an autoimmune process. So in the type 2, they auto-regulate their endogenous insulin release and just run off of what you've put in or they put into their skin. So the hypoglycemia is less likely to occur in the type 2 on pramlantide, and the dosing scheme is actually quite a little bit different. This is a two-step titration. There's a 60 microgram and then 120 microgram dose, and in fact the delivery mechanism for the type 2 is a pen that has a uh, capacity for delivering up to 120 micrograms, but it starts at 60 micrograms. So the type 1s were titrated from 15 up to 60 perhaps as a maximum. The type 2s will go from 60 to 120. The other thing to remember not only is about the dose of the insulin, but because the drug has an effect on slowing down gastric emptying rates, it may be appropriate to switch the patient from a fast-acting preprandial insulin to regular insulin. Now this seems like it may be taking a step back in history and going backwards in therapy, but in fact the delivery time course of action for regular insulin probably better matches the rate of food absorption from the gut after somebody has taken pramlantide for type 2 diabetes. So regular plus pramlantide is not a bad way to go with many patients with type 2 diabetes. You dose adjust downward. And then the last thing I think is really important to just tell the patient with type 2 diabetes is that they're going to have that sense of satiety. Many patients with type 2 diabetes are the first ones back to the buffet for the second course. And I think that to reassure them, in fact, that it's okay at the end of uh, part of their first plate to push the plate away and say, I'll come back to that if I'm still hungry, is a really th good thing to endorse with the patient. Many of them have been brought up in a time when they believed they had to eat everything on their plate, and that's just not going to happen with this particular peptide in a good majority of the patients. Part of our goal is to attenuate the weight gain that is otherwise seen in patients using high-dose insulin therapy with type 2 diabetes. And so, in fact, we want to use this, I tell my patients, as a crutch to give them the opportunity to be able to say, I've had enough to eat. But if you talk about that during the first encounter, you're going to run into much less nausea down the road, primarily because they won't push too much food into the system and then run into the problem where the gastric emptying rate is so slow that it can't accommodate uh, emptying of food out of the stomach and they end up then feeling the nausea sensation. And they're not going to like to continue to use the drug if they're nauseated. So, Prevent the hypoglycemia, prevent the nausea, and you're going to have an easy success in using this drug.